ChristianGeekCentral.com Let's look at the plus two page of many topics. Favorite superhero movies. You know, I used to say for years that the, my favorite superhero movie wasn't even a superhero movie. And I used to say the Matrix Trilogy. And, and, and I do view the Matrix Trilogy as, as one movie. I know a lot of people would love to forget that the second and third one exists and they just prefer that first one. Um, I really enjoy the first two. Uh, I have issues with the effects in the second one. Um, when they chose to go the whole CG route instead of the actual setting up of the cameras to do the bullet time the way they did in the first one, they did a lot more CG type stuff and uh, so it was kind of disappointing in that regard. But uh, I, for years that would have been my answer. Um, but I've seen that one so I've seen that trilogy so many times now that I, I don't think that would be my answer anymore. Yeah, Man of Steel is just. Uh, great combination of weighty human drama, although it's largely an action fest, but I I like superhero movies to have characters that experience real human emotions and I guess maybe just seriousness. I like I like superhero movies where they're they're taking it seriously. It's not that they can't ever have moments of fun. But the general tone, by far, in the superhero movies I like, is Stone Cold Serious. I wonder if that, that possibly ties into, you know, one of the reasons I like superhero movies, I think, on a psychological level, is just their... Oh wait, that's a civilian. I, sorry. Is there the way, the way in which they reflect Christ as a savior, you know, as someone who is good and strong enough to make the wrong things right. It's a powerful idea. It's a wonderful hope that we have as believers. So I think that's why one of the reasons why superhero, the superhero genre really resonates with me. Make a choice. And then of course the power fantasy is fun too. I mean, that's certainly part of it. And I think also that's a, you know, a, a, a foretaste in a sense, or it can be a foretaste of our resurrected bodies. You know, I don't think there's anything wrong with having like a power fantasy, as long as your fantasy isn't specifically about having power over others and dominating them. I really like the original Batman, Michael Keaton Batman movie. I think it still holds up and uh, and I like the the Dark Knight movies. I really like uh, the Kick-Ass movies. Um, they've each got some stuff in there that is brief and just kind of like crass and I'm just like, oh come on guys, are we in junior high, you know. Um, but for the most part, it's this incredibly surprising combination of comedy and weighty drama. I mean, the first one, if you've seen it, I won't spoil anything, but if you've seen it, there's one scene that leaves me in tears. I think every time I watch it. And for that reason, that's one of the few movies in my collection that I'm like, I don't want to watch this very often. Because I learned my lesson with the Matrix trilogy. Um, I've watched that trilogy too many times. I know it too well to really appreciate how great it is anymore. I don't want to have that happen with the uh, other movies that I love. So I really like the kick-ass movies. I really like Defendor, which is a kind of a small, maybe an independent film. It's got Woody Harrelson as a mentally handicapped man who uh, just has a really pure sense of, of good and evil and right and wrong and not wanting the bad guys to win. And, and so he becomes a crime fighter, you know, and uh, it was marketed as a dark comedy. I, I, I didn't really find it to be funny at all. But it was a great drama. It's like Watchmen without superpowers. Well, no, because it's not stylized at all like Watchmen. It's the it is the most realistic take on superheroes in the real world that I've ever seen. I, I don't think there's another movie that could match the realism that that movie has. It's like if somebody got in a costume, this might be one of the the reasons they would do it, and this is what would probably happen. That one, though, it's uh, it's rated R. It's very, it's because it's so realistic. It goes into some really dark places, just with in terms of human depravity. It's just you know, so it can be difficult to watch in that sense. But uh, I, I really like it a lot. So yeah, Defendor. 
Kick-Ass 1 and 2. I mean, I really do like Watchmen, but that's... That's more like... I almost think of that as like a mini-series. Because I, I have the director's cut, and that's the only version I would watch now. Which is going to be like a four-hour or something experience. It's really long. I hate talking animals. I hate them. In DC Comics for years, has had a thing with talking animals. Usually monkeys and apes. Drives me nuts. Um, it's silly. It's silly. It just makes me think of Disney animated movies. I think Jeff Johns is the only one that's ever been able to make Gorilla Grodd seem threatening to me and not silly. And he only pulled it off in one story. That's it. I don't- I think Grodd is silly. They've got Gnort, which is the Green Lantern dog, and they've got Chip, the Green Lantern- the Squirrel Green Lantern. And in Guardians of the Galaxy, they got their guy, whatever he is. I'm not a Marvel guy, so I, mean, I can't remember his name, but the guy in the little raccoon or whatever the crap. I don't know, I don't get the fascination with them. So actually, the last time I played this, I stopped playing because I reached this level. It's like, oh, I gotta fight all these monkeys and apes, you know? And that was the straw that broke the camel's back. It's like, yeah, yeah, I'm ready to be done. <laughs> Alright, here we go again. Follow your heart. Christian Geek Central dot com.